You are about to enter a world of corporate chaos, fragile egos and teams that blame each other faster than a kid who broke a window. Automatic Addison. You think the hardest part of robotics is the engineering, the algorithms, the hardware, the insane deadlines. And let me be clear, robotics is hard. It's brutal. I often find myself staring at a screen at 3 a.m., questioning my life choices, wondering why my robot thinks forward means sideways. It'll break your spirit. It'll break your will. And if you're not built for it, it will break you. But, but, that's not the hardest part. The real challenge, the real nightmare, dealing with people. Oh, oh, you thought, <laughs> oh, you thought getting into robotics would enable you to escape people. You thought you'd just be coding, right? Building and revolutionizing the world, huh? Wrong. You are about to enter a world of corporate chaos, fragile egos and teams that blame each other faster than a kid who broke a window. And if you don't know how to survive, you're finished before you even start. Let's break it down in this video. Number one is office politics, also known as the corporate chess game. You think robotics is all about merit? That's the best ideas, like always win? That's false. Let's talk about Bob. You know Bob, he's the middle manager. He's bald, he's been around since dial-up internet. Bob doesn't know Ross from roast beef, but he knows how to block your career. Bob has been sitting in that chair for 35 years and your genius is making him nervous. You come in with the fresh idea, AI driven self-learning swarm robots. Bob hears that and he immediately schedules a meeting to kill your dream in cold blood. Not because it's a bad idea, but because Bob doesn't like innovation. Bob likes lunch breaks and job security. The best ideas get shut down because Bob in middle management doesn't like change. So what does he do? He schedules a meeting to discuss feasibility. And guess what? That's the moment your dream dies. Not because your idea was bad, not because it wouldn't work, but because Bob didn't come up with it. Bob doesn't care about innovation. Bob cares about keeping Bob relevant. So what's the solution? Learn how to navigate office politics. Make Bob feel like he came up with the idea. Play the ego game, play the ego game. Because the real engineers who want to win in robotics, they're not just technical wizards. They're politicians, strategists, chess masters. They know how to boost Bob's ego and make him think it was his idea. They play the long game. They know he doesn't know Ross from Roast Beef Sandwich, but they master influence or get left behind. Number two is the blame game, also known as the never ending civil war. Let me introduce you to the most consistent phenomenon in robotics. A project goes sideways because they all do at some point. And the first thing that happens, the blame game begins. The mechanical engineers say, oh, the software team can just fix it in the next update. The software engineers say, the hardware is garbage. How are we supposed to code around this? The electrical engineers say, it's not the wiring, it's the control logic. The project manager says, we need to schedule a meeting to uh, talk about this. Meanwhile, the actual problem, still sitting there unfixed while everyone points fingers in every direction like a bad courtroom drama. Look, let's be real. Every team thinks the other team is the problem. I've seen it. Mechanical engineers think software is magic and can fix bad design with a few lines of code. Software engineers, they think mechanical engineers and mechanical teams are still in the stone age and refuse to adapt to modern control systems. Electrical engineers, they're just praying. Nobody asked them to redo the wiring. And the executive team, they don't care. They don't care who's at fault. They just want it shipped on time. 
So what's the solution? Be the bridge. The engineers who rise the fastest in robotics. They're the ones who speak all three languages, mechanical, electrical, and software. They're the glue. They know how to mediate, translate, and cut through the nonsense. Because at the end of the day, it's not about who's at fault or who's to blame. It's about getting the robot to work in the real world. So number three is personalities. I call it the zoo of egos you have to deal with. Oh, oh, you thought the hardest thing about robotics was the debugging. Uh-uh-uh, no, no, no. The hardest thing is debugging your coworkers. Let me introduce you to the cast of characters you'll meet in this industry. First, you've got the PhD guy. He thinks he's a genius, overcomplicates everything, won't listen to practical solutions. He uses words like heuristics to hide his insecurity. Then you have the 10 times engineer. He works 16 hours a day. He thinks you should too. He's got no social life, probably drinks too much coffee. This dude hasn't slept in three days. He writes 10,000 lines of code and also crashes the server every Friday. Next up, you have the corporate project manager. We all know the guy. He schedules meetings just to hear himself talk. This dude, this dude schedules five meetings a day and produces zero results. Then you have the old school engineer. That, you know that guy that still thinks software is a fad and he calls everything that isn't a gear or a motor unnecessary. And then finally, we have the CFO. The CFO only cares about one thing, the money. If your idea doesn't sound like profit, they don't care. And you, you're in the middle, just trying to build a robot that doesn't set itself on fire. How do you win in this game? You don't fight them, uh-uh, you manage them. You make the PhD guy think that he's in charge while subtly guiding him to the right solution. You let the 10 times engineer work himself into the ground while you work smart. And you make the project manager feel so important that he doesn't waste your time. This isn't just about robotics, folks. These are next level corporate survival tactics. And number four is the art of influence, also known as how to actually get things done. Listen up, your technical skills will only take you so far. You need persuasion, the gift of gab. You need that charisma, that charm. You need to know how to make people want Support, to support your ideas. Because in this world, it's not about being right. It's about getting people to believe you're right. Here's an example. You propose an advanced slam algorithm that improves your robot navigation by 80%. Your manager doesn't understand slam. The CFO doesn't care about your algorithm. He cares about money. So if you start talking about real-time LIDAR, his eyes will gloss over. Don't, don't talk like that. Probabilistic modeling and all that. But if you say this, we will make the warehouse deliver 30% more packages in an hour and save the company $2 million a year. Now they're listening. Now they're listening. The best robotics engineers, they don't just build robots. They build narratives, stories. They don't just write code, they write the future. Let me leave you with some final thoughts. Robots are hard, people are harder. But if you master people, you win the game. You will rise faster. You will get your ideas implemented. You will own the room. And if you don't, You'll be the genius that nobody listens to. And your best ideas will die in a PowerPoint presentation that never sees the light of day. It never gets past the first slide. So what's it gonna be? Master the robots, master the people, and take over the industry. Now go be great and keep building.